Hello everybody, this is going to be a guide on the fundamentals of vision in Dota 2 that includes Hero's Vision as well as Wards. Banana Slam Jam! So first and foremost, I'd like to point out that vision is different at day and nighttime. The game starts at nighttime, where at the zero minute mark, it changes to day. And every five minutes thereafter, it'll swap back and forth between day and night. So zero to five is day, five to 10 is night. And that will stay that way throughout the course of the game. So knowing that there's a difference between day and nighttime is the most fundamental aspect of vision in Dota. But what exactly that difference is and how it affects you is something that you guys should be at least aware of at a very basic level. So most heroes in the game, there's a default amount of vision that they have. That vision is 1800 radius during the day and 800 at nighttime. You can see approximately five times as much area around you during the day as you can during the night. So that is a massive difference. But then we have to also talk first in terms of our intro to this subject about heroes that see more than others and don't follow the same mold as this 1800 day, 800 night vision. So first and foremost, there are only two heroes in the entire game that have limited day vision, meaning they do not have the 1800 day vision. First and foremost, makes sense, is Night Stalker. And when it comes to checking heroes in terms of their vision, simply click on the hero in the heroes tab, go to the about section, and we'll see it right here. The first one represents day vision, and the second one represents night vision. So for Night Stalker, it's simply reversed. The hero is entirely predicated upon being at strong at night and weak during the day, so he has 800 day vision. The only other hero in Dota with limited day vision is Batrider, who has 1600 instead of 1800. Not a massive difference, but it's worth noting. Big thing about Batrider, though, is he does gain vision bonus when he uses Firefly. So during Firefly, he actually has more day vision than most heroes, or than all heroes. So when it comes to night vision, there are several heroes that have full night vision. You already saw, when we say full, that means 1800, because that's what the standard daytime vision is. So full night vision belongs to Night Stalker. It belongs to Luna, who has 800 by default, but her passive gives her a total of 1,000 bonus. So it gives Luna once she has maxed out Lunar Blessing. We talk about Lycan when he's in his ultimate form, which you see here, he has 800 base, but his ultimate gives him a thousand bonus night vision. And then last but not least, for whatever reason, Slark. You know, my boy Slark, my favorite hero in all of Dota, he sucks, but he's got 1800 night vision. What's really important to note about all of these heroes is they are to some extent vision-based heroes because having more vision at nighttime is a massive deal. And we'll go ahead and point out some examples of why this is such a big deal. Um, but simply knowing these heroes have extra night vision is really important. There are some heroes in Dota 2 that have more than 800, but do not have full night vision. Examples of this would be Wyvern with her Q provides additional night vision, mainly because her attack range becomes more than 800. So if she couldn't see that far, then she wouldn't be able to attack, which would kind of suck. On top of that is Sniper, who has 1400 night vision. Pretty much the same idea when you have your level 25 talent, Dragon Lance, maxed out passive. You wouldn't really be able to shoot anyone and not being able to shoot them because you can't see them kind of sucks. So Sniper's got pretty high night vision, 1400. Bane has 1200. Even going from 800 to 1200, you're more than doubling the area that you can see. Bounty Hunter has slightly more at 1000. So some people have night vision based talents. So in this case, you have a Spear Breaker at level 10 with the 500 night vision. Oh, another important thing to note is that uh, most summons and towers change their vision from day to night as well. But one of the best vision providers in the entire game of Dota for nighttime vision is Undying's Tombstone. It doesn't say it anywhere here, but Undying's Tombstone has 1800 night vision. So if you place it on a cliff or place it on some high ground, you get flying vision for 1800 range. He can be considered a counter to a decent amount of these vision based heroes. So now that giving you guys a brief intro to heroes being able to see differently during nighttime let's go ahead and quickly compare the difference in terms of vision so right now we are a normal vision based hero during the daytime and you see how far that we can see in all this radius this circle around us that we can see right this is how far we see when standing we'll stand right on top of the rune for simplicity's sake right we see all the way near this staircase we see all the way near this staircase all the way down to these trees 
with full day vision. So when we compared anti-mage's vision to that of Night Stalker's, whose is only 800, this is obviously a reverse of what you're gonna see during the nighttime, but it's a pretty stark difference. You feel nearly blind. You can't see any of the river, you can't see any of this area, and you can't see anything that's down here. So in terms of how much information you are provided with vision, it feels drastically lacking in comparison. So at nighttime, if you are a hero with normal vision, this is the amount that you're going to see. Now, a big understanding that we must have is that wards, despite anything else, if you look at the description of them, they provide ground vision of 1600 radius. But there's no distinction between night and day. And that's because they provide the exact same amount of vision during the day as they do during the night. So if we're talking about a ward on a cliff. If we're an 1800 day vision hero, you can see pretty far. Notice how far we can see using our flying vision that we have when we're on top of the ground. Now for basics, since I'm talking to you guys about things that you likely have heard if you play Dota, but if you're very new to Dota, let's first talk about what I mean by flying vision and ground vision. Flying vision means that if, I, if a hero is depicted as having flying vision, that no matter what trees are in the way, no matter what cliffs are in the way, doesn't matter, they're gonna have full radius of vision of whatever their vision would be. Very few heroes are given flying vision for good reason. It's an incredibly broken concept to be able to see things in Dota. Night Stalker really being the main one. But what ground vision means is that you will see everything that is lower elevation than you are. So if you're on a cliff like this where I'm super high up, I have effective flying vision because there's nothing higher than me here. So I can see everything around me. So anti-mage on this cliff sees this far. But if I were to move, you know, to the low ground here, suddenly all the trees around me, I can't see the high ground near me. I can only see things that are not blocked by trees. So imagine trees as like a vision blocker that if your hero was actually looking from you know their perspective, if this tree is in the way, I can't see anything that's behind me here. I can't see anything that's over there. I can only see out the trees over here. They effectively block a solid wedge, what you would see in terms of the pie of your entire radius of vision. So we saw how far a hero sees. Vords are pretty solid. You know, it's not quite as far, 1600, but compared to 1800, that's really not much of a difference. And if we change that to nighttime, so as you see at daytime for the ward, it's gonna transfer to nighttime, and the ward vision is the exact same. So when it comes to wards, it is important to note that all wards are actually invisible to the opponent. They cannot see them unless they place true sight. So sight is simply what wards, heroes, and towers provide, while true sight provides vision of all things, including invisible heroes, Invisible wards, invisible summons, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of invisibility in Dota. So what you can use to detect invisibility is dust for heroes, right? See how it says reveals and slows invisible heroes. Or for wards, you can only use sentries and gym. So when you place a sentry, this radius around it tells you exactly how far it's going to detect things. So sentries will briefly, for 15 seconds, provide a small area of vision for you. You'll see that here. See how we see this? This brief area around it. The purpose of that is in case you're trying to kill an enemy ward on a high ground, you can place the sentry on the high ground in order to see it. However, if you place this sentry to kill something on the high ground, notice how this area around it is relatively inefficient. So when you're placing wards, because of the high ground, low ground mechanic, if I place a ward, because of the high ground, low ground mechanic, it's not exactly useful to place a ward here, for instance because compared to what this sees, compared to this, I can see an entire circle around me. So the highest value wards in the entire game are the ones that are placed on these high grounds with little eyes on them. Here, here, here. This may change by the time you see this video because patches do change, but there's generally these high ground areas that can be seen. So what that means when it comes to de-warding or looking to find the opponent wards or worrying about your own wards, will give you a little basics to the mind game of warding, is that at the lowest level you should understand that these these high ground wards are very valuable. So when you're looking to place wards, you're learning as support. Maybe you're even a carry looking to place wards for yourself. High ground wards are a great place to start. But if you're looking to deward them, then what you should do is place the sentry on the ground where the edge of the sentry is used to catch the high ground. And then if you're talking about an opponent's ward here, the options you have are certain heroes can either get themselves up on the high ground, certain heroes have vision abilities that provided for them, 
Or if you don't have any of these things, you should use your courier to scout out the high ground for you. In this case, um, I have a ward of my own, but if the enemy had a ward here and I didn't have a ward, I could place a sentry like this and place the courier on the high ground. So when you're looking to de-ward, that's the first, like the most basic thing to do would be to place a ward right here. The second like step of this, the intermediate level would be to place the ward within range and then use your courier to scout the high ground. Now, if you're not getting de-warded in your games, nobody's killing your wards, feel free to high ground clip or ward high grounds all you freaking want. But if you are starting to get de-warded, then you should consider the fact that people are probably going to start placing sentries like I'm doing up here. So your wards that you place for similar areas should be further than this circle away from the high ground. So I'd want to place a ward like right here, for instance, that wouldn't get detected by this sentry. At the expert level of warding, what happens is you know that people are looking to de-ward the high grounds, but they're also placing the wards on the ground like this. Rather than placing it the radius away from the high ground, a lot of people start placing it the entire diameter of this century away from the high ground. Notice how ba basically if people are placing the century like this, a ward here is just as likely to get dewarded as a ward here. So notice how this century is like this, catches everything. People will start placing wards like right over here, right? They'll start placing things right on the edge of this where they don't get detected by high ground searching sentries. So there's kind of like a meta game to warding, but this is a nice intro into the basics of like how high, high MMR players think about warding. If you guys can start games by just placing high ground wards with a sentry nearby to de-ward, that's a great first step for anybody looking to get introduction to vision. The last portion of this guide that I want to use for the fundamentals of vision is the incorporation of smoke of deceit. Now this is an item that I would consider pretty high skill, pretty high understanding of Dota to use. But generally, what you want to think about with smoke is that if you read the description, it makes the caster and all allied player control units in a 1200 radius invisible. So this invisibility needs to be, we need to be a bit careful about how we understand this. This invisibility, look at it, we see here, it's a disguise that grants invisibility that is immune to true sight. So if you use a smoke of deceit, then if you walk through opponent vision and sentry, like no matter what they have, they cannot see you. So the whole idea of smoke of deceit is it's a way to balance the game such that if, an, if a team controls area, like if they have vision of an area, you have some way of surprising them regardless. Now smokes, you start with two at the start of the game, it only re replenishes every seven minutes, I should know this. So then the next step about smoke that's really important to understand, the biggest difference in regards to the fundamentals of vision, is that when you smoke, look at the break radius. It says attacking or moving within 1,025 range of an enemy hero or tower will break the invisibility. So what I really want to emphasize about that number being 1,025, daytime vision is 1,800 and nighttime vision is 800. So for the majority of heroes, what that means is that if you break the smoke, meaning that you reveal yourself, at nighttime, if you don't have any other source of vision, you won't be able to see the hero that made your smoke in. If you do, if it's during the day, you will see them. So what I want to show is this. So I'm going to go and smoke my hero, and I'm going to show you that at daytime, I can see an enemy hero without them being able to see me. Right now, I'm still smoke of deceit. I'm still cloaked by it, so they can't see me. So if we look at the break range, if I'm like a blink initiator, somebody trying to stun this guy, I can do this without him seeing me and he has no time to react. However, during nighttime, it's going to be quite a different story. So when we compare it to nighttime with smoke, we'll show the axe is going to be in the same area. If we smoke, we can't see him when our smoke actually breaks. So a really good habit to get into, a really good fundamental of supporting in general especially, is that if you are smoking, this is how important it is that at nighttime, you also have a ward on you. Because during the day, you'll be able to see the guy and gank him anyway. But at nighttime, what you'll need to get in the habit of is if our smoke is like this, if your smoke breaks, place a ward immediately such that you can find them. The next step would be that if you smoke and you're, say, uh, walking into the enemy triangle because you want to invade and you are looking to go high ground, always place a ward at the high ground, 
especially at nighttime. That's a good habit to get into during the day, but especially at nighttime, because the last thing you wanna do is use the smoke of deceit to get the advantage. Be smoked like this, not have this ward, have your smoke break here, have the guy see it, and then kill you instead. So these are the only real ways that you can manipulate vision in Dota 2, a smoke of deceit combined with wards. So it's super important that you understand these things. Next, it's also important to understand that towers have different vision radius when it's nighttime compared to when it's day. During the nighttime, notice how there's a little sliver um, of vision missing between these two towers. You also see there's a sliver of no vision between these two towers. So um, the sliver is a little bit larger up here and the same thing down here. So as you guys see here, see here during the day, there's no sliver of lack of vision between these two towers. Same thing with these two towers and then same thing between these two towers. So when it comes to navigating the map, being sneaky, deceiving the opponent, you can see how much easier it is to make moves during the nighttime and also how much more important it is that you have wards during the nighttime because the innate vision you are provided from your heroes as well as your towers is simply way less. So thanks for watching, guys. That's going to be my fundamentals video on the basics of vision. Stay tuned for more fundamentals videos. And there'll be more videos on vision in the future, but it'll be more advanced warding guides and stuff, stuff like this. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye.